In the land of Skyrim, we will come across many different events and situations. A beheading in solitude, a secret vampire invasion in Morthal, and ugh, poor people in Riften. But another situation we may encounter is a woman in Whiterun supposedly named Sadia running away from a group called the Alakir. When helping out Sadia and locating the leader of the Alakir, Kamatu, we will be left with a decision. Slay Kamatu or betray Sadia and hand her over to the Alakir. Each person has a story on why you should help them. But who is right? And who should you ultimately side with? Hello my fellow hirelings of House Telvani! I'm Neloth, and today I'm going to be talking about the quest In My Time of Need, and analyzing both sides of the Redguard gene pool in order to definitively answer the question on who you should side with, Sadia or Kamatu. So, let's start by going over the quest. In Whiterun, around the time we slay Mermolnir, the first dragon encounter in Skyrim, we will likely come across a guard kicking out a pair of red guards. Afterwards, one of the red guards will approach the player and ask if we have seen a red guard woman, and will pay for information if we find her. And then, with a quest title over our head and the promise of reward, we are set off to find this woman. Now, interestingly, there are actually three red guard women in Whiterun. Alum, Saphir, and Sadia. When talking to each of the women, Alum doesn't say shit. Saphir just says no, but Sadia, well, Sadia is a different story and will ask us to follow her to a back room to talk. Now, depending on if you're a pervert or not, you may think that she is taking you upstairs to do more than talk. And those people would still be correct, as Sadia will brandish a knife to the player. After some talking, Sadia will give her side of the story. The men who are looking for me, the Alakir, they are assassins in the employ of the Almeri Dominion. They wish to exchange my blood for gold. I don't know for sure. I spoke out against the Almeri Dominion publicly. I suspect that's why these men were hired to hunt me down. Once she finishes her monologue and asking for our help to kill the leader of the Alakir named Kamatu, she will point us to the White Run prison where we can find a member of the Alakir whom likely has information on the fabled Kamatu. When speaking to this prisoner, we find out that he was left behind in prison because he got caught, which is apparently a big no-no to Kamatu and the Alakir, which is very cold of them. The prisoner agrees to give us information as long as we pay for his release. After wasting 100 gold I could have spent on either Canis Root Tea or buying 10 fucking attic rooms at the Sleeping Giant Inn, the prisoner will tell us this. Kamatu is west of Whiterun. It's an unassuming little cave called Swindler's Den. And now all we have left to do is to go to the cave and confront Kamatu himself. When we arrive at the cave, we will encounter bandits. And two of those bandits at the front of the cave will talk about Kamatu and his fellow Alakir. I'm not sure I like these Alakir warriors hiding out here. They seem like trouble. Keep it to yourself. We're not paying us to talk. They'll be gone as soon as they've found whoever they're looking for. And we'll have all the more corn. But no matter what, we will need to either sneak past or dispatch the bandit scum that roam these caves. Personally, I would kill them, as the only use for a bandit is taking their gold and their souls for enchanting. After a day of violence and carving through bandits, we will finally come face to face with Kamatu himself. Kamatu will acknowledge our capabilities in fighting through all of the bandits and will ask to talk, believing there is no need for bloodshed and that all parties can profit from the situation they find themselves in. 
Kamatu will then give his side of the story for why he pursues Sadia. She sold the city out to the Aldmeri Dominion. Were it not for her betrayal, Tanith could have held its ground in the war. The other noble houses discovered her betrayal, and she fled. They want her brought back alive. The resistance against the Dominion is alive and well in Hammerfell, and they want justice. So now we are left with a choice. Kill Kamatu or help Kamatu capture Sadia. If we decide to be chivalrous and help a fair maiden out, we can kill the shit out of Kamatu and his Alakir, and afterwards we can speak to Sadia where she explicitly says, At last, I can rest safely. You have done me a great service, warrior. I cannot thank you enough. Take this reward. I managed to sneak some of my wealth out of Hammerfell when I left. It's the least I can do. For now, I will maintain my ruse here. You are always welcome in the Bannered Mare. And we get a whopping 500 gold for our efforts. However, let's say we decide to help Kamatu instead. If we agree to help him, we can lead Sadia to the Whiterun stables where Kamatu will be waiting and will use a paralysis spell on Sadia to quickly capture her. Afterwards, he will say, Now we'll take our friend here back to Hammerfell, where she will pay the price for her treason. Not on the way back. Once she gets there, it's not up to me to decide what's done with her. And as for you, I owe you a portion of the reward, don't I? Well, here you go. Spend it wisely, and if I may, don't allow yourself to be fooled by a pretty face. You're better than that. And then he will give us 500 gold as well. And that's the story. There is a second way to get both rewards, however, that seems to be more of a glitch than an intended ending, so I'm not going to be covering it. Now that I have gone over the quest, it's time to now answer the question, who is right? And more importantly, who should you side with? Well, let's look at Sadia. She says that she is a member of House Suda and spoke out against the Aldmeri Dominion, likely in Hammerfell. Now, this statement seems very far-fetched for one reason. After the Great War, the Empire ceded large amounts of Southern Hammerfell to the Dominion as part of the White Gold Concordat. The rest of Hammerfell, however, was pretty pissed off at this deal and completely rejected it and the Dominion's presence. Because of this, the Empire had to completely renounce all of Hammerfell to preserve the treaty. For the next five years after the White Gold Concordat, the Red Guards fought the Dominion to a standstill until the Second Treaty of Stros Mackay was signed, forcing the Dominion to completely withdraw from Hammerfell. So, if this information, which mostly comes from the book The Great War, is correct, then why the fuck would anyone give a shit about some noble speaking out against the Aldmeri Dominion? I mean, they are fighting a fucking war against them. That probably takes a bit more precedent. Additionally, when you ask why the Alakir are after Sadia, she will initially start the sentence by saying, I don't know. Now, maybe I'm a bit of an armchair psychologist, but it seems like she gives her answer with uncertainty, as if she made up an excuse on the spot, or had to remember a lie she tries to tell herself. Regardless, it does nothing but prove my point further that Sadia may be lying. Now, while we can easily look at history to prove Sadia's point incorrect, there is still the possibility that she is still in the right, and so we need to analyze all aspects of this situation, including Kamatu himself. When we ask why Kamatu is after Sadia, he will state that Sadia sold out the city of Tanith to the Old Mary Dominion, and because of her crimes, she is to be brought back alive to face justice. 
So, if we go back to the war between Hammerfell and the Old Mary Dominion, we learn that Southern Hammerfell was both ceded to the Dominion, and after the Stros Mackay Treaty was signed, it was positively devastated by the war. This also means that many battles took place in the southern region, and the city of Tanith is also located in the southern region of Hammerfell. Kamatu will also say that the resistance against the Dominion is alive and well in Hammerfell, and that point is certainly true considering that Hammerfell was able to kick high elven ass and bring their army to a standstill. However, while Kamatu makes very good points and his reasons appear to be truthful, there are a few uh, discrepancies. Kamatu is supposedly employed by the noble houses of Tanith. Yet, while hunting Sadia, the Alakir are working outside of a bandit camp, which is very suspicious and underhanded as if their operation is not exactly as legal as it sounds. Additionally, Kamatu states that Sadia is wanted alive, and when capturing Sadia, Kamatu will use a paralysis spell. When done with the quest, both Kamatu and Sadia will disappear from the game, likely because they left for Hammerfell. However, after a certain amount of time, we can actually find Sadia in a coffin in the Whiterun Hall of Dead, meaning that she was killed, which completely goes against everything that Kamatu said. Now, I believe both discrepancies I brought up can easily be explained. The reason Kamatu is operating outside of a bandit camp is likely because of a reason we found at the beginning of the quest. The Alakir are not welcome in Whiterun, and all of Skyrim does seem to be suspicious of outsiders, even in Imperial lands, it seems. So, operating out of a bandit camp may be out of necessity and deemed as a necessary evil by the Alakir. Also, the Alakir don't seem to give a shit that you slaughtered all of the bandits, which further proves my point. Now, as for Sadia being in a coffin, I think there are three possible reasons. The first reason is Kamatu lied to you only about the noble houses wanting her alive, and he did so to get your help more easily. However, this doesn't explain why Kamatu bothered to paralyze Sadia to begin with. The second reason is that Kamatu did bring Sadia to Tanith to face trial, and she was found guilty and put to death. And the Red Guards cared so little for her that they just threw her corpse back to Whiterun to be buried. The third reason, which is much more boring but likely more accurate, is that this was a mechanical mistake on Bethesda's part. After the quest is done, Kamatu and Sadia permanently disappear from the game. However, Sadia is technically a citizen of Whiterun and belongs to the Whiterun faction. And so because of this, after disappearing, the game mistakenly believed she was killed. Kamatu does not belong to the Whiterun faction, so there is no reason that he would be buried in Whiterun once he disappears. Now that we have analyzed each character, it is time to come to an official decision on who to side with. And you can probably already guess my answer, and it is the Alakir brother Kamatu himself. I believe people should choose Kamatu for two reasons. One, he is likely telling the truth based off of the historical information we found. Second, even if Kamatu is a really damn good liar and is an assassin of the Ald Mary Dominion, helping Kamatu doesn't really aid the Dominion that much. Killing one person who spoke out against them seems rather inconsequential in the grand scheme of things, considering their operation all around Tamriel. So, even if you are deceived, who cares? Now, that may sound rather cold, but I'm a Telvanni, so go fuck yourself.
And that's all I wrote, a video where I discuss and analyze who the player should side with in the quest in my time of need, Sadia or Kamatu. Let me know down below in the comments who you sided with and why. I probably won't read it unless it's funny, but you could create discussion with others down below. So with that being said, make sure to like the like button, like the subscribe button, and like the bell notification down below to be updated on future videos. And I will see you whenever the fuck I decide to upload again. House Telvani be with you. Please, O oh hero of Skyrim, I shall be ever so grateful.